ET contact, government, technology, the moon, reptilians. These were some of the topics that I recently talked about or shared some space with when I connected with my Pleiadian guide. This was about a week ago, and I get a lot of information from these transmissions, from these connections and these channelings. I don't always um, convey them in videos. This one was super, super fascinating, super interesting, and it really talked about what's happening with the moon and what's happening with the reptilians and humanity's evolution and ascension. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Haven't done a video like this in a while. We're going to dive deep into some of the uh, topics and things that maybe you probably thought about, um, but really wanted some clarity on. So I'm going to share with you exactly what was conveyed to me through my Pleiadian guide about a week ago. So I connected with her and for whatever reason, we just started opening up into um, the moon and the recent moon landing. I know that kind of triggered this within me and started this flow of information and drew in my Pleiadian guide. And she started to fill me in on some of the details as to why humanity just recently is starting to get back to the moon and why since 1972, there have been no manned moon uh, landings or moon projects. So what she said to me was that back in 1972, humanity was quarantined from the moon as moon exploration really started to ramp up um, and humanity had this big interest in the moon. It was evident that there was uh, an ET base on the moon. Okay, so humanity discovered this and they were essentially quarantined at that point back in 1972 for a period of 50 years. That meant no more manned moon missions to the moon. Okay, well, why did this happen? I asked, why was humanity quarantined? And she explained to me that there was um, really a, a, not an agenda. There was just this drive to keep humanity quarantined because there were a lot of reptilian influences within the human collective consciousness. So the Federation did not want humans to go beyond the Van Allen belt of the planets. Therefore, humanity was quarantined within this lower dimensional period of space. Okay, so that kept all of this dense reptilian fear-based energy within the Earth's sphere. Now, there was a mission or an operation by the Federation to gather up and collect this reptilian energy over this 50-year span of time and remove it from the planet. They didn't want humans to essentially leave the Earth's sphere, travel out beyond the moon, to the moon and beyond, and essentially infect different areas of the solar system. So all of this energy was quarantined to the Earth and it was quarantined for a period of 50 years. Now, recently in 2022, that quarantine has lifted and now you're going to see humanity start to return to the moon. A lot of that reptilian energy has been removed from the Earth's collective, from the, the Earth itself. And part of that had to do with the light workers and star seeds that were incarnated here particularly from the 70s forward, which is where I was, right? In the 70s is when I came in. So we as starseeds essentially came in here and brought the light into the planet and forced a lot of this energy up. So during that quarantine period, a lot of that energy was being brought up into the collective so that it could be essentially removed from the Earth's aura or energetic field or grid. However, you want to term it. Now, the, the governments were aware of this quarantine and they abided by the quarantine, but you got to ask yourself, and I asked my Pleiadian guide, what did humanity get or what made them decide to agree with this quarantine voluntarily? And what humanity received was technology. Okay. Now you might think, well, ET technology, cool, right? That's how we got stealth. That's how we got fiber optics, all this stuff. Technology was given to humanity. Now, from humanity's perspective, from the government's perspective, it appeared as though it was ET technology. It was just an advanced form of technology that we, or humanity collectively, had the comprehension or the consciousness to be able to 
understand. So they were not given, humanity was not given anything that really would relate to like Pleiadian or Arcturian or Syrian, any of these higher dimensional ET consciousnesses. Humanity would not have had the consciousness to be able to understand reverse engineer or figure out the physics behind any of that because it it really um, manifests above our field of Newtonian physics. So the dripping of technology started back in the 40s, you know, with Roswell. There were crashes. There were ETs. These ETs had the appearance of what we would term grays. And this is all coming from my Pleiadian guide, which were really biological, artificial intelligence entities that were piloting these craft. And these craft were not ET technology. Okay. These craft were lower frequency technology craft that the United States and these other governments could kind of reverse engineer and figure out how it worked. So humanity started to get fiber optics. They got stealth technology. Now, stealth technology is interesting. It's been around for a long, long time as a result of these crashes. But as a result of that 1972 quarantine being put into effect, humanity was shown how to apply stealth technology to aircraft. So shortly after 1972, we started to see aircraft being developed that were invisible to radar. This was that stealth technology that humanity had had probably for, for a few decades prior to the 70s, but it was mated to, to aircraft right in the early 70s as a result of this quarantine that were shown how to kind of stitch it together. Um, so we have these biological artificial intelligence entities, these grays, which were really um, created by the Pleiadians, by the Federation to come in to our sphere of reality, to our dimensional field and look very alien. So a lot of these events were really distractions to keep these governments away from the, the operations that the Galactic Federation were carrying out in terms of removing reptilians, reptilian energy from the Earth's field and from the collective's field. So we had interactions with these beings. We were given um, numerous UFOs, spacecraft to study. She brought up Bob Lazar, that story being accurate and true. There were craft at uh, Area 51 and S4 that were being reverse engineered. These craft were given to us by these biological entities that were lower forms of the Galactic Federation so that humanity could be guided into really focusing in on this technology and putting their attention into reverse engineering it all the while, while this operation of removing the reptilian energy was coming to light. So um, a lot of very interesting information from my Pleiadian guide, very detailed. I didn't know a whole lot about this stuff hadn't researched it. I was familiar with Bob Lazar. I didn't know any of the dates in terms of the quarantine, when the last moon mission was, or any of that. So it was very fascinating to see that come through. But as humanity goes forward now, and we start to be able to leave the planet and travel back beyond the Van Allen belt, our consciousness will expand to be able to start to perceive the universe at a higher frequency level. So in terms of humanity's future, humanity is just about ready to re-enter the Galactic Federation and hold a place within that. So we're in the stages now, the final stages of really clearing the rest of this dense reptilian energy, bringing it to light, bringing it forward, so that those who choose or came here to ascend into a fifth dimensional frequency will be able to navigate through that fourth dimensional field observe all of it, ground more of their light, and step in or manifest a fifth dimensional earth where all of our galactic brothers and sisters will be waiting and available for us to rejoin them with open arms. So we had an operation going where they were doing a lot of the work from a higher dimensional field. We stepped in and grounded into the planet, incarnated to be able to take this energy and anchor high frequency light into the planet to help the earth release 
all of this, this old, dense, fear-based controlling matrix. So it's been a 50-year mission in terms of that, go as far as that goes. She also told me that um, there are numerous stargates around the planet, and there have been instances where various humans, select humans, were able to traverse those stargates or utilize those stargates and visit with Federation members in different areas of the solar system, okay? The moon, Mars, Saturn, Venus, there were others as well. So select humans have been in contact with the Federation. Now, whether or not they were aware it was the Galactic Federation or if they were aware that it was a lower um, created manifestation of the Federation, that I'm not completely clear on. She just said to me that it was select humans that were selected to work with the Federation, part of how this technology came here and really to, to mate the technology that we were given to our human technology. But she was very keen and, and really, you know, direct at saying that the technology that the humans have that appears alien is not truly alien. It is just a more advanced form of our Newtonian physics type of technology. So very fascinating conver conversation. Um, if this resonated with you guys, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and definitely watch this video next. Thank you.